from Exodus. You cannot see my face, for no one can see me and live. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The Bible contains many stories about people coming from humble beginnings who go on to perform the works of God, just as the hero in many tales rises from small places. This has become the standard model of stories. Misfortune comes to the protagonist, then an external force offers salvation from their suffering in return for a favor, in most cases a quest. These heroes tend to have the same quality that God underscored when he commanded Moses to free his people from the bonds of Egypt and lead them to the promised land. Moses was pure of heart. Although he was raised by Pharaoh's daughter, Moses was born into a Jewish family he was never corrupted by the power that his childhood had granted him. After a dramatic turn in his life, he worked as a shepherd, which taught this already selfless man the values of trust and patience. Isn't it amazing that a man who came from royalty and almost immediately became a herdsman could still have such traits? It is doubtful that anybody else who had been through this fall from power would be trusting or patient. It seems to me that this may have been what made Moses as holy as a man could be, why God chose him to free the Hebrew people from bondage and lead them to the Promised Land. To those who want to be strong in mind and pure of heart, Moses may be the ideal role model. Although I'm pretty sure that nobody here wants to wander through a desert for 40 years, his path was laid out by God. And when we all as Christians want to God to show us that clear path, we want to be God's followers. We want to spread his word, and yet we know this is not easy. That is what made Moses' journey so extraordinary. He did not know what God had in store for him and the people along his journey. But Moses had faith in the Lord, whether the next day bring them food or famine. As Christians, we strive to be like this, to be able to walk through fire if it was God's wish. But as humans, this is difficult. God has made us flawed, aware of risk. We know it is right and good to follow God's will, but we are not perfect. These qualities can often contradict one another. It is our duty to find the middle ground where awareness and faith meet. Now let's flash forward 3,500 years to the present. If anyone here is a Nationals fan, you know that we had one heck of a season. And if anyone here is a Cubs fan, the door's behind you. <laughs> but that's the point. My family loves the Nationals. And some people who I am apparently related to are Cubs fans. I love them, of course, but we were at a stalemate a week and a half ago. The series went all the way to game five, sudden death. As a Nats fan, I wanted to win more than anything. That is how the human mind works. You make a commitment to something, like baseball, and it becomes the most important part of your life at that moment. Of course, this temporary dedication is not something of everlasting importance, like your love for someone, how it's always top priority. Temporary dedication only matters to you when it needs your attention, like a baseball game. That kind of commitment is the tangible kind that does not last forever and is not as important as your faith. I had to tell myself that constantly after game five. <laughs> Preparing the sermons helped me remember the importance of staying true to what you believe in and the people you love and how those things are a greater calling than your everyday desires. If I have learned anything from Warren, Greg, and Elise, it's that by holding these higher values above your everyday ones, you are giving instead of receiving and already walking the path of God. <laughs> now let's take it back five, 3,500 years at the end of Moses' journey. He was near death, and he made a request to see the face of God. He had done everything that the Lord had asked of him, so why would the Lord say no? God says that no one can see him and live, perhaps because that man is not holy enough to embrace his presence. God's intentions are not always clear. By leaving us to ponder the meaning of him denying Moses, he has taught us that not all of the answers are going to be written in stone. An essential part of God's glory is that man can accomplish incredible things when we have faith, not just in him, but in the minds and hearts of your neighbors, believing that they can do it and having them know that you are there for them. Because when you do this, you have already seen the face of God in all of them.